What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Josh back with another video on Keep It Techie, where I break down tech, Linux, and everything in between to help you grow your IT skills. And today, I'm showing you guys how to set up a IIS server. Microsoft Internet Information Services in a Windows Home Lab environment. And this is perfect for anyone looking to build skills in web hosting, application hosting, or just getting familiar with enterprise level Windows Server Administration. And this is all within a Proxmox setup. So let's get to it. So if you haven't watched my previous video, make sure you check it out where I show you guys how to set up a Windows environment on, let's see, Windows Server 2019. Make sure you check out that video. I'll probably post it up. You know, it'll pop up in a couple of seconds, but let's break this all down. I mean, IIS is Microsoft's go-to for hosting websites and web apps on Windows Server. I mean, it's powerful, widely used within the industry. And honestly, it's one of those tools that you have to know if you're working in IT, especially in roles involving Windows-based environments. Now, here's what it all can do. Like you can host static websites like HTML and CSS projects. You can also run web applications, including ASP, .NET, as well as PHP sites. You can also enable SSL, TLS to secure your sites. And also you can use it as a reverse proxy or for load balancing. So whether you're a beginner or experienced running IIS in your home lab is a great way to prep for real world scenarios. And best of all, it's free to test in your lab. So let me go down and switch over to my virtual machine, my Windows Server 2019 virtual machine so I can show you guys how to get this set up right fast, which is super simple. All right, so this is the previous server that we set up. Like I said, this is 2019. It's that evaluation uh, version or copy of Windows Server. And like I said, all you have to do is first set up your virtual machine, basically log into Proxmox, you know, the web interface, create a new virtual machine, install Windows Server, you know, make sure you allocate at least two CPU cores, four gigabytes of RAM, and about 40 to 60 gigabytes of storage. Now, let me go down and show you guys how to enable IIS on Windows Server. Super simple. Like I told you guys before, this right here is your bread and butter when it comes to everything installed. And actually, we have IIS installed already. This is why I hate Windows. I really hate this operating system, bro. All right, so you probably saw a few seconds ago, I had IIS on here. On the, in the last video, I had went on and installed it, but I wanted to walk you guys through how to install it from the beginning. So I went on, removed it, and brought it back up, rebooted it, brought it back up, and then let's go through the install. Let's get to that step. So first thing you want to do is go under Manage. And I showed you guys all these options under here, so I won't go through them again, but all you have to do is go under Add Roles and Features and hit Next, and then we want to do a role-based or feature-based installation. So Let's go down and hit next. And then you select the server or the server pool, hit next, and then select what you need as far as a role. And like I said, we want to set this up as a IS server. So let's go down and just select that. It will install the management tools and the management console. Just so you guys know that that is part of the tools that are included with IS. So go down and hit add features, hit next there, and then these are any other features you may want to add. Let's say you want to add, I don't know, whatever. You want to add whatever, SMB, Telnet client, whatever. You can add that in here. And they do have some extensions for IIS in here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Win or M IIS extension. Let me click on it so you guys can see what this is. Windows Remote Management. This will allow you to manage it remotely from another server using a WS, what is it, management protocol, which provides, you know, it's kind of like a secure communication. It's kind of like using SSH or something but for windows and but not use it ssh because it's not command line based so let's go on hit next there and this will go on and install the selections that we made like i said we're installing that is server so let's hit next this will give you a breakdown of everything so if you need to add anything else to your web server like for instance 
This is probably something you may want to add to centralized SSL certificate support. You might want to add that basic authentication, dynamic content compression. So they have a lot of options in here that are not selected by default, but you can select them if you need them. And I recommend you just select what you need because Windows is slow enough. You don't want to add things that can slow it down even more. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but I, I'm really not a fan of Windows servers. I mean, they have their place, but is what it is. I mean, and that's just not, it's not my go-to, you know, operating system for running certain things. And then plus it costs money, obviously. And so everything I use is free and open source, so Linux based. So let's go down and hit install, but that's pretty much it. You can select here under restart, you know, this server if you want to, if it's required, but let's go down and hit install. We're not going to reboot it. It's gonna go through and install that feature for us. And then you can also close this. You don't have to leave this open. What it will do under here is give you a notification under server manager. And like I said, this is kind of like your bread and butter. This is where you live. You can go under local server. This will give you all the information about your system. You know, you can also check out all the servers within your domain. You know, if you have something like that set up, and this is your other features. And then uh, you guys seen it, but I will show up right in here under here. That's why I say this is kind of like a bread and butter or a centralized location where you can find all the things about the particular server that you're using at the time. But if you look under here, you'll see, you know, like I said, it'll give you a notification that it is complete. So you just go on to working on something else if you want to while you wait for it. And so what I'm going to do is just pause the video and wait for this finish. And I may reboot. We'll see. But when we come back, we'll have IS in here. All right. So like I said, if you look under these flags, you'll see the feature installation is complete. You'll see it right there. You could just close out that notification. That way it doesn't, you know, show anymore. Under here is an alert. But if you read this server manager, you should see IS right there so you can click there it'll show you you know the server itself and it'll show you just some information about it you can see event logs you know the services you can see pretty much everything you need to look at for the actual server but the place you want to go to manage as is similar to you know all the applications on windows there is a manager for it just like this is server manager there is a iis manager and that's where you're going to go to make all your modification, your changes, set your directories where you're going to store or store your files that you're hosting and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is close the server manager right now. And what you want to do is test to make sure the server is up and running. So I'm going to open up the browser, ask me later. And then all you have to do is type localhost and it should pull up IS. So that'll let you know that your IS server is working, at least locally because you may have to open ports. It all depends on how the server is configured, especially if you're working within a domain with group policy, they may have certain policies. You may have to move it, move the server into a specific group within Active Directory so it'll have the right policy. So it could, you can open up the ports, you know, within the firewall. Obviously this system is just stand a standalone server. So I can go into the firewall and modify it if I want to. I'm not even sure if those, if the firewall is on on this system, but in order to check it, you can go to Windows Administration, you can go under let's see let's see if we can find it right fast i always have a hard time finding stuff in here yeah and there we go now here at the bottom windows defender firewall with advanced features so you may have to open up port 80 yeah as you can see the windows firewall is on but you may have to go in here let's see let's go to inbound and you may have to go in here and find the port or add the port i can't remember let's see let's go up in here and see what i'll do is i just turn it off i ain't i ain't got time. i know this is supposed to be a, a tutorial you know i'm supposed to be teaching you guys but i definitely recommend you going through and looking and opening up the correct report ports and making sure the firewall stays on and i'm sure you can go under here type new rule let's see program or you could do ports tcp ports or you could do that specific application let's see all ports all programs now nah, let's go back let's just go ports ports and protocols so just type 80. so 80 that's what we want to do we want to open up the ports for port 80 allow the connections if it is secure you can allow that you can block the connections you know all that stuff so let's hit next when does this rule apply domain private and public so it'll work and this is our s server and we can put web server is web server so and you can put a description if you want to i'm gonna hit finish and there we go there is our rule up there at the top so we got inbound traffic and outbound traffic well not outbound but inbound traffic at least 
So let's go down and close that right fast. I don't want to go too deep into firewalls just yet. I'll probably do a video showing you guys how to set up your firewall. But if you go under administrative tools, you can also search. You can, I just click the start menu. You get to search and type IS and it should come up. You should be able to find a manager. There you go. And then also, if you go back to the home, like we were just at under start, you can go under Windows administrative tools, which is what I have open. And you can find internet information services manager right there. And this is one of the places I go a lot when I'm managing servers. I just open that up because it has everything there for you. So services, server manager, if you want to go back into that, you know, firewall, like we just went into task scheduler, system information, just quick, quick links to pretty much everything. Our DNS server that we set up on here. And all you have to do is open up IS manager. Let's go on in and make this thing huge so you guys can see. But let me show you guys the default page right fast. So if you go under sites, you'll see the default web page. That's that default web page I showed you guys in the, in the beginning on the local host. So one of the easiest ways to get a site, you know, up and running pretty quick is to just use this default web page page sites but that's what i do whenever i'm just trying to quickly set something up so i'll show you guys that right fast but you can just explore that location that shows you where it is i already have an html file somewhere let's see let's go under my documents directory and i got an index.html so i'm gonna rename this to index.htm press enter and that should match up with what's already over here it just says i start or whatever we can rename this file or actually we can override it let's just use the is file let's just change this to is start and i just want to quickly show you guys how to get something else set up i got some html in here that's already written into that html file that i put on here when i started this you know this whole tutorial so let's go on and just drop it in there right fast my name is the same name and actually let's rename this or actually let's make a copy of it maybe some permissions issues that i may run into I'm not 100 percent sure because i know I just way more difficult to set up than what i'm used to when i was when it was a long time ago you know when i used to set it up in the past so see bck i'm just name it bck for backup file and then let's overwrite that file right fast that way we got a backup of the HTML file just in case you'd be like oh we need we need to fix some permissions or something like that so we go back may have to restart the server let's see let's restart it or let's actually stop it and then let's start it all right and so go back to there yeah there we go so that's a quick way to set up a quick site you got a whole bunch of options in here authentication compression default documents uh, directory browser the error pages you can modify those handler map mapping ht response headers logging mem types modules output caching request filtering and ssl search you might want to go in here to go down and enable that if you want to get that set up you got to you know get some keys and all that stuff and get that added as well configuration editor if you want to go up in there now check this out if you go under content view you can see all your files within your website that's a way to see everything within the is you know manager you can also check out the pool check out the server at the server level you see what i'm saying uh, i know sometimes you have to make changes in here when especially when it comes to permissions and see there you go server certification or certificates so you can go in there and look at all of the search that you have assigned to specific servers you can import them create you know certificates create a domain certificate create self-signed certificates enable automatic rebind of renewed search so just go through here and check this out i just want kind of want to show you guys an over review of setting up an IIS server as well as messing around with IIS manager and that should get you set up with your web environment all right y'all so that's how you set up IIS server in your Proxmox environment super simple but also a critical skill for IT pros out there. And like I said, I kept this at a surface level. I didn't want to overwhelm people with too much because it's a lot within that IIS manager. I know one time I was working on a site, it took me, you know, a couple of hours just to get everything, you know, running on that server. It's not, it's not as simple as, you know, setting up Apache on Ubuntu or setting up in engine x on rocky linux and you just into the direction of the files put the configuration file in there restore the server and boom all your stuff is in there all this stuff is tied into all of microsoft's products you know what i'm saying you got your authentication you know all that 
stuff you have to deal with when going through and setting up, you know, a web server on Windows Server. But if you find this video helpful, go down and hit that like button, subscribe to keep it techie, and let me know in the comments what else do you want to see in the Home Lab series. And also, I appreciate y'all tuning in. And until next time, keep learning, keep building, and of course, keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it techie.